Luton, May 1990. Blockers arms. A horde of big burly bikers walk into the crowded bar in Luton with the infamous Hells Angels rocker worn proudly across their cuts. The notorious biker MC are welcoming their German chapter president to England and have decided to visit one of their regular drinking haunts in Luton. Confident in their reputation as fearless fighters and hellraisers, they don't anticipate any groups giving them an issue. Unfortunately, they're wrong. The Luton makes men in gear are a violent mob of football casuals that have a reputation for causing havoc on the terraces and the streets against rival firms up and down the country. 13th of March 1985, when Millwall visited Kenilworth Road to play Luton Town in an FA Cup quarter final, brought Luton's hooligan firm to the attention of the gutter press. Millwall's firm, the Bushwhackers, started to riot and invaded the pitch. The game was halted after just 14 minutes of play and the referee took both teams off for 25 minutes. When he blew the final whistle, the pitch was invaded again. Over 700 seats were ripped out of the stands and the surrounding streets also saw more violence. Called me husband, and before we could get down, they smashed all my life. How frightened there's were you? Conquer. Look, there's my concrete. How frightened were you? Oh, what? 72? And eight miles from 78, and they're frightened. Poor man. But how did the loot and mix and the Hells Angels allegedly end up clashing back in the 90s? The Lay Valley Hells Angels chapter were allegedly visiting a pub in Luton, the Blockers Arms, which was seen as somewhat of a den of iniquity, a music pub of all types of scenes and styles. On this day, according to the book Gangland Britain, and written about on various hooligan forums, members of the Luton Migs were also in the pub, and as is the case with most casual firms, were enjoying banter, drinking plenty of alcohol, and indulging in lines of the devil's candy. Two groups of alpha males from different subcultures drinking and partying in the same place as the ingredients for trouble, and this occasion was no different. The exact details are up for debate, but according to the reports I've read, the day exploded into violence, with the Luton lads kicking it off, and a huge bar brawl erupted, with stools, pool cues, glasses, all being used in the melee to render each other unconscious. There is a belief that biker MCs are vicious fighters, and there is an element of fear and mystery around their rockers and tattooed appearance. But being no doubt, when it comes to group fighting, the hardcore elements of most football firms are equally, if not more so, experienced. Both are brotherhoods of sorts, although the MCs are far more structured, like military units with a hierarchy and set rules. The football lads fight for the thrill of it and the camaraderie. On this occasion, it is said that the Luton lads got the better of the bikers and run them out of the pub. This must have been humiliating for the MCs, as they had a guest with them, from Germany and the one big difference between biker MCs and football lads is when the excitement is over for the most casuals they will go back to their normal nine-to-five jobs and lives until they next meet up but the one percent bikers are different they live and breathe their club and culture and a liberty at this level could not be forgotten and retribution would be expected allegedly what happened next was the addresses of those football lads involved were found and bikers began driving up and down their individual streets to freak them out. The last thing you would want is a club of raging bikers. You and your mates have bashed up, finding out where you and your family live. You would imagine this would only be the start, and pure violence would be to follow. But according to the book, a deal was struck by the heads of the two groups, and a financial settlement was made to the 1% chapter in restoration, and the feud was put to bed. I've not been able to 100% corroborate this story, but there's another incident which happened in Stoke-on-Trent, which I can corroborate, which involved the then Sergeant of Arms of another notorious biker MC, who was owed a substantial amount of money by one of the lads of Stoke-on-Trent's naughty 40 mob. Casting my mind back, it must have been the late 90s perhaps, or early 2000s, but this guy was a friend of mine, so will remain nameless, had fallen into debt with an infamous figure around Stoke-on-Trent at that time, who looked after the security of his MC chapter. He's actually a good bloke, the biker, who I'm also friends with, and no longer officially uh, linked to the club, but anyone from Stoke involved in that life will know this incident. 
Threats were being levelled from both sides and a meet-up was arranged at a Stoke pub for the two men to settle their differences with a square go. It was thought from the Stoke side that the bike would turn up with reinforcements so all the most violent and naughty lads from across the city affiliated with the football lads turned up at the boozer for backup. The Stoke lad had wrapped an impromptu homemade duster made out of cellar tape and coins around his hands and was waiting nervously for this guy to turn up. To give context, this biker was very well known in underworld circles and was known for being a very capable fighter. So naturally the football lad involved, who could have a row, but not in the biker's league, was right to be nervy, especially with a whole horde of lads behind him expecting a good showing. The biker did turn up, but he was on his own on his Harley, like a lone ranger. In a way that was even more impressive and showed a confidence in his own ability. The whole pub exited behind the footy lad like a swarm of horribles, baying for blood. As the biker approached with what looked like a tool in his hand, the lad involved got the jitters and backed off. One of the other lads in the Stoke firm, a good friend of mine and one of the best fighters in the city, decided to step up instead and went straight for the biker. Crunch! As he landed a big right hand, the biker landed a glancing blow from his tool, slicing down the edge of his forehead. Before the fight could heat up any further, in a flash, armed police came out of nowhere and everyone was ordered on the floor, hands on their heads as they were all searched and many arrested. Someone had got spooked and rang the old bill up and warned them a big off was going to be taking place. But instead of defusing the situation and dispersing the lads in the pub, the old bill lay in wait for it to ignite so they could get some arrests. I wasn't at this merry gathering. I could have been in prison at the time or on holiday. I'm not quite sure, I can't remember. But that account is more or less accurate and I know all involved, especially the three main people in it. The two men who ended up fighting, both were jailed for the incident, but became friends after. The beef was sort of squashed, and funnily enough, for whatever reason, the guy left the biker MC not long after, and ended up working with one of the top guys in the Stoke firm, a former pro boxer, who went on to become a club owner, and very successful businessman. He's also good friends with the author of Naughty, by Mark Chester, and sex, drugs and football folks, which are all available via a link in my description. So if you want to read them, highly recommend. He's a much better narrator than what I am. And uh, the Audible version is really, really powerful as well of the original Naughty book. Um, I'd just like to say as well, the bikers, I've got a lot of respect for. Back in the day, um, there used to be a clubhouse in, I think it was Port Hill, in Newcastle on the line, in uh, part of Stoke on Trent, where they had the clubhouse back then. I don't think they had it anymore. And we used to have some very good nights where you'd go in and there's like a little security thing at the front. If they knew you and they let you in, nights could turn into days. Um, it'd all be, all the shutters would be down and it'd be pitch black with like a little bar and there's loads of different rooms off it. And we had some good times in there. And there was proper good stuff, the bikers. Um, so it wasn't always falling out. There was a lot of crossovers and friendships as well. So I just thought I'd point that out. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. And anyone who was there with the Luton turnout, which has been featured in books and on forums, it'd be good to know the exact details of what happened. Also, one last very important thing. A friend, Kevin Lane, has been recalled back into jail um, in a situation which we believe he is completely innocent of. There is a petition going round. Please have a look at it. Take the time to click on the link, have a read and sign it. Uh, it would be much appreciated as we try and create awareness of this. Matt Legg, uh, I'll leave the link in the description there, good friend of mine, Matt Legg who has a very popular channel, he's a really good guy. He's fighting tooth and nail with Kevin's family, try and bring awareness to this. You can find out more information about it on there. I shall leave the links to it, to the lives where Kevin himself has been on the phone talking to Matt about the exact ins and outs of it. And as far as we're concer concerned, he is completely innocent, although he's got to go through the legal processes of his legal team, etc. But if you did have the time, 
it would be very much appreciated. And if you want to find more information about it, like I say, links are in the description. You can go over to Matt's and look at the uh, lives and Kevin talking about it himself. But I know that he would be very much appreciative of any support anyone can give as well. Okay, brilliant. Have a fantastic um, Easter weekend and I shall be back with you next week. Take care.